Okay, welcome back everybody. It's great to have y'all here. Now in the last video we built all the boxes to this rear queen Argosy or Airstream bed and in this video we're going to build the top structure. And so the very first thing we're going to do is start scribing that back wall onto a basically a jig, a piece of half inch MDF. And I make my scribes out of just plywood discs that are circles and I get different radiuses and I work my way back uh, closer and closer to the wall. So we saw there was probably a couple inches off the wall. I'm gonna scribe that and then we're gonna come outside the trailer, use my jigsaw, just rough cut this uh, to the line. So that you can see it there, still pretty sizable gap. So I'm gonna make, make another hole in my disc and move it closer to the edge, as you can see there, and scribe it again and just repeat the process. Now the hope here is that I scribe this side, when we get it nailed down, I can flip it over and it'll be a pretty close match to the opposite side. Also, my little battery down there, if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description. That thing's pretty cool and I've used it throughout this whole build. Just a quick plug. Okay, so this is, this is, you can see how it's getting closer. It's just hitting on that curve. So this time around, I've just made a little scribe out of plywood. It's got a point to it, and the hole is like a quarter of an inch from the point. So it's right on that edge, and my scribe has gotten a lot closer. At this point, I'm not going to be able to use the jigsaw, so I just bust out my spoke shave and hand shave it to that line. Yes, you can use hand tools on MDF and plywood. It's not going to hurt your tools. I think I did it in the last video, too. Now, you see me do this process once. I did it like four or five times back and forth. So it took a little bit of time uh, to get it all nailed in. Real quick, before we get too far in the video, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Facebook Post. I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. They are a membership club that offers top of the shelf goods from under the radar brands. There's over $70 of value in this box. I have no idea what they sent me, so let's just jump right in and see what we got. The cool thing about Bespoke is their lineup of limited run boxes are constantly changing, so it's like getting a new gift every month. And this month, I got the cast box. So I got a feeling this is gonna have something to do with bourbon. This is pretty cool, a white oak barrel with a spigot. Wow, cool. Great thing about Bespoke is they scour the globe for the coolest selection of products. So you're always getting unique and interesting items like this knife. That's pretty awesome, you guys know me well. A belt knife. Who couldn't use a belt knife? Get, whoa, that's pretty cool. Nice, can always use a belt knife. It's free to sign up, it's no hassle. You can cancel anytime, you can skip a month. If you don't like a product, you can return and get something different. It's very easy to work with, there's no huge commitments. So if you're interested in one of these boxes, head down to the description, there's a link down there for you. There's also a promo code Andy20 that'll get you 20% off. Remember when you get to the homepage, Sorry, I'm admiring this knife. Uh, to scroll to the bottom, take a quiz, and Bespoke will custom create, custom tailor a gift package for you. Wow, I can actually make bourbon in this. That's pretty cool. And there's even instructions. In the meantime, I gotta get back to this bed build. Thanks to Bespoke for sending the cool box. Let's get back to work. Okay, so let's talk about real quick what I got going on. We've got a bit of a gap here, about 3 16 to an eighth. Everything else is pretty good and tight. I'm very tempted to keep working on this, but I'm not gonna do it because it just could get worse. Um, it's the bed, there's gonna be a mattress, you're not gonna see it, I'm not gonna worry about it. When I flip this jig over and check it on this side, it actually fits pretty good, there's a little bit more gaps, and this gap's slightly bigger on the other side, but like I said, I'm just gonna live with it. Um, the mattress is gonna cover it up, so you're never gonna see it. The thing, what I have to do now, is obviously we're gonna make the whole piece. So what I gotta do is the plywood that goes on here needs to extend from the back wall all the way to the middle of these two boxes, right where they meet. So obviously as I started shaping this, I worked out material and this got too small. So I've measured over, this is my midpoint. This is where it'll, this is the midpoint of the plywood. I know I need to add an inch right here. And then at this point right here, I need to add an inch and a sixteenth. So when I trace this pattern onto my actual plywood, I'll make sure to add those, uh, on there. So the next step is take this in the shop and make the actual piece. Okay, so with it scribed in place, hopefully that all made sense. Um, I'm gonna actually make my full piece here using 
um, my jig would just set up. So the important thing here is to know the length of the width of your trailer, which I, th I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it was about 91 inches. So that's a absolutely must that you hit that parameter. And then the depth from the back wall to the middle of the cabinet that we spoke of. So those two measurements I'm going to lay out on my plywood. I'm going to go ahead and cut my plywood to that width and to that length. And also, don't I could find a much better way to do this. I should put it on my workbench. This is what happens when I get in a hurry. So with the plywood cut to size, I'm going to use my skill saw right on top of my jig and just cut right to the edge, leaving about an eighth of an inch. And then we can come back with a top bearing bit and a plunge router and just copy that jig profile exactly onto our plywood. This is a super useful bit. I use it all the time in my router. And in this Airstream build, we'll be using it a whole lot. Because I swear, just for this queen bed build, I've built, yeah, I don't know, six or seven jigs. Okay, so the big moment now is to set it down, see how it fits in there. Uh, and surprising enough, I got real lucky and it came out looking pretty good. Oh yeah, that's moving no problem, man. Beautiful. Here she. Oh, I mean, I couldn't have done. I couldn't have worked out any better. I got really lucky. Super lucky. Okay, here she is. Have a look at that. I mean, that is just a solid fit all the way around. Little gap there, that's okay. This pushes back, but I'm not too worried about that. Sizable gap there. She's getting a little bright with that sun. And just a tight fit from there on. Well, I can't help but try it out. Oh, let's just see. Oh yeah. Man, I need to sleep with a view right here. You gotta check out the view. Coming straight out my window looking up right now. Look at that. Blue sky, clouds, nighttime, nothing but stars to look at. Give that a thumbs up. Okay, so with that on there, the next step is to cut the hatches. And so I've got a real, very simple, unique way to do that. This is a bushing that fits in the router with an eighth inch upcut spiral bit. Um, basically that bushing is going to copy a pattern that I've already made so uh, I just figure out how big of a hatch do I want. I make the, the jig out of MDF. You can see I've rounded the corners and everything. And then I'd be, I just follow, I'd take that bearing, I'd take that bushing and just ride it along that MDF, uh, probably two or three passes to get all the way through that half inch. And um, I, have a, I have a perfect opening and I have a hatch, both in one cut. Um, the drop off becomes the door to it and you've got an eighth inch reveal all the way around. Works out really well as long as you are patient and careful and you keep the bushing on the plywood. You don't want to go off. I do leave about you know an inch section that I don't cut through. Uh, if you just let it, if you cut all the way through and let it fall, you're going to end up, something's going to get messed up. So I leave a little bit and just cut that last bit of waste off with a handsaw. Okay, the next step is I need a way to catch the hatch. Otherwise, it's just gonna fall right through into our cabinet box. So I take more MDF, I lay it, I, I lay a full piece down, glue it on the back side, and then screw it down really well. So you can tell I've traced this out. It steps out a couple inches past the opening. So we'll screw that down. I put a lot of screws in this because it is holding some weight. Um, anyone who's laying on it or standing on it, especially without a mattress, um, 
you know, that's quite a bit of weight. So we want to make sure we screw it and glue it, everything's strong and secure. Flip it over, and then I'm going to change bushings, and I'm going to set it up with a bushing on my router that gives me a half inch um, of MDF to catch that lid. Uh, so it's the same thing. I just do three or four passes and cut it right out. And then I have a MDF waste there that I don't end up using. The best thing about this is it's simple method. There's a little bit of wasted material, but you get an exact perfect match of both your hatch and the, ca the, the stop underneath it that keeps it from falling through. Now, this is all stuff that could be executed with ease on a CNC, but this is a great example of how with a simple plunge router, you can do so much with a plunge router, um, you can do the same thing a CNC can do just as effectively. Okay, so the next step is to attach it. So like I said, this whole thing needs to come apart. I want to be able to easily pull it apart. So what I'm doing is using um, quarter inch number 20 bolts into a T-nut that is hooked on the bottom side of the frame of the cabinet. So first thing I do is drill with my forcer bit a recess that'll hold the top of the bolt and a washer. Then I drill a hole through for the bolts and then I install my T-nut and um, basically can bolt it down and easily take it on and off with an Allen wrench. I think in all I put 13 of these or a dozen of these bolts throughout uh, the whole bed. Okay, so you can get a look on the front side. What I have to do is actually twist in all the bolts from underneath through the T-nut uh, where they're gonna be and put the frame on and then hit it with a hammer. That way, every one of those bolts will leave a little indention where I need to drill a hole. On the back one, I didn't need to do that because I could access it, get under there and drill up. But the way I've designed the tabs on this, which if you want to, you can order the plans and see how this all works. That's, you can't get to the tabs without doing this technique. So just tap it down, it leaves a little indention, and then uh, we'll drill it out for the bolts, just like we did in the bag. Getting this frame on and off is a total pain, I can tell you that. Uh, I've done it way too many times and I've gotten frustrated just about every time. Okay, so I've got a very, very small drill bit on here. This is basically a pilot hole going through where my indention was just to mark where I need to come back and drill with a Forstner bit. You can't drill out your bolt hole, which is about you know, 5 sixteenths. Uh, you can't drill that out and then come back and countersink with your Forstner bit. It won't work. A Forstner bit needs a, the point in the wood. So I drill a really tiny hole, flip it over, and then countersink all my holes with the Forstner bit, and that allows that bolt to drop down in with a washer and sit flush with the surface of the bed. <clears throat> I, then I come back with the drill bit and drop the holes for the bolts. Okay, now get it back on. Finally, this is the last time I had to take this on and off. Uh, basically, I've put on the outside, there's two little um, bracket clips that I've built and glued on and screwed onto the case, and that's what holds the T-nut that this bolts into. There's two on each end, and there's three of those kind of down the front hatched front door that helps support that door from pushing in. And like I said, if you're interested in building this or want to know more about it, you can order the plans and see the details of all that. Another thing I want to add is I put down a rubber gasket around the edges of the plywood so when I set that plywood frame on top, um, even though I am bolting it down, it's not gr glued and screwed down. So there is some tendency maybe for it to vibrate and hopefully that gasket, rubber gasket, will keep it 
from rattling and making any noises. Okay, go for it. Yeah, high five, bud. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's it. Well, no, my wife did not keep me out of the house. It is nighttime, and this is what, this is the first time I think I've ever filmed with the lights on in here. I don't have all of them, but we have a lot of them. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, uh, I just thought I'd come in here and try it out, you know? I just built this, spent so much time building this bed. Why not come lay down on it? It's done, though, and I'm pumped to have it done. One quick thing is if you want to build this yourself, if you have an Airstream or an Argosy and you want to build a rear queen bed, I have full 14 pages worth of plans up on my website. Links in the description. I will say it's not an easy build, so you're going to need a little bit of woodworking knowledge, um, but it's there for you if you want it. Still a little bit left to do. We're going to put the veneer panel on here. Um, I did put hinges on this, so this opens and closes. No problem right now. A little bit of tweaking to do on the fit, but it's there. Um, once I build out the rest of this interior, we'll make a decision on the veneer and the paint color, which really doesn't matter because there's going to be a mattress on top. Next project is going to be the front gaucho. Uh, that is going to um, be a little bit tricky, but not quite as tricky as this, I don't think. And then we'll tackle the bathroom, the bunk, and the two kitchen spots. So appreciate you guys tuning in. And one quick thing I want to mention, there's exciting things happening with Merce. This is a special edition blackout Stay Sharp shirt. Stay Sharp shirt. Stay Sharp shirt. Golly, stay sharp shirt that is going to be available for Cyber Monday. Also, I'm going to be signing parts of this Argosy, the old belly pan, pieces of aluminum, and sending them out with select orders. So if you're interested in getting a signed piece of this camper, you should order a t-shirt. More details are going to be coming on that. You have to order within the right time frame over Cyber Monday. Um, so I'm going to be posting to Instagram. Be on the lookout for that. I also will post it in my posts uh, here on YouTube. So I'll give you all the details, but just keep that in mind. If you're interested in getting a signed piece of the Argosy, that's how you do it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. Next up, we're going to build the front gaucho.